Very early on, Kelly Gonzalez's sister, Olivia, shared with the world something she found disturbing on the day of the murders. Here is a screenshot of Kaylee's LinkedIn account. Now notice how Kaylee's account is active at 11.33 p.m. on November 13th. This was 12 hours after the 911 call was made. Her account was then deactivated. The content is unwanted or harmful. But, I mean, obviously I didn't report it. Now this is a quote from Chronicles of Olivia, who is the YouTube channel from which the Gonzalez family gave an exclusive interview and shared this content. Olivia showed me an email where she messaged the Moscow PD and then asked them why they deleted her LinkedIn account. They replied and said it was Ill illegal for them to do that and it was not them. So the big question is, who logged into Kaylee's LinkedIn account and why was it deleted? Kaylee had other social media accounts. Why her LinkedIn? It just doesn't make sense. Four, almost as though they're walking in single file out at night at three o'clock in the morning, actually closer to 312 in the morning. And as you watch those four figures, remember, police say the murders happen between three and four in the morning. Did those people see something? Who are they? Have police tracked them down, asked them any questions, ruled them out? And again, if they're ruled out, did they see something as they were on foot, walking just steps away from where the murders happened? We do not have the answers to this, any of it. But as usual, our senior national correspondent, Brian Enton, is live on the case. And tonight he is standing in that exact location, right where that body cam action took place. So Brian, for us looking at it on television, it's hard to get the exact perspective of where the officers were standing, what direction their body cams were pointing, and where those four mysterious figures were walking from and to, and how far away they were from the actual murder scene. So can you take me there and, and help us get a feel? Yeah, it's very confusing when you're looking at the body camera video. So hopefully we can give you some perspective. This is Band Field. This is where the alcohol call came in. The young men were here in the field when the police first showed up. That is the Sigma Chi fraternity house uh, right there. So the police walked those young men across the street. This is Taylor Avenue, right to this spot right here. I was able to identify it because of the fire extinguisher. And they were standing in this spot. Uh, the, the young men and the body camera video was pointed this way. And it is over my shoulder where you could see very faintly uh, what looked like several people walking fast or almost running by in the background. And I want to walk you over, Ashley, and give you a little more perspective. It was somewhere in this area right here. And we can tell because we analyze these lights of this little uh, apartment building. It was somewhere right in this area. There's another big apartment building here. The question you might be having is how close is this to the house where the murders happened? Mo is going to point in that direction. Our producer is up there. She's going to flash a flashlight, Ashley. You see that flashlight flashing right there? That is right yeah, in front of the house where the murders happened. So it's all very, very close. So what we're effectively seeing is like, if my eyes don't deceive me, about 200 yards away from where Mo is flashing the light at the murder scene, uh, those four figures were walking where you're standing. It's, it's that close. It's that close and it appears, again, it's so hard to see it in that body camera video, but when we zoom in, it does appear that the figures are walking slash running uh, from the direction of where the house is where the murders happened. At first, I thought they were just walking down Taylor Avenue. Uh, but when I got out here and really looked at everything, uh, it appears they might actually be coming some from the direction um, of, of the house. And then just point to what direction they're, they're headed. From what I'm looking at you straight on, just point the direction they were headed. Okay, let me show you again. So up there on the hill, 
that's where where the flashlight is flashing. That is where the house is, where the murders happened. It appears they were coming from that direction um, and that they were going this way, back towards Bandfield, uh, back towards the Simper Cut House, where, um, where the police were. And it's sometimes, I just want to make sure our audience is clear, it sure sounds like you're saying Banfield, like the name of this show or my last name. It is B-A-N-D, right. as though it's a school band, and that is their field. It is the school band's field. So, um, But what I'm really curious is when you showed me Mo uh, uh, or Lauren flashing the light up at the murder scene, it looked like that's the walkway that you have shown us that leads down from the house. So is it feasible that those four people were coming down that walkway? It's possible. Um, and, and, you know, I can't tell for sure. It's impossible to know for sure. Were they coming from that direction? Were they sort of walking along Taylor Avenue and it just appeared they were walking that way? We don't know. Um, I can not tell you from being out here for weeks, especially when there were more students here, this is a very busy area. You've got the frat and sorority houses. You've got a ton of apartments right here. So, you know, it doesn't mean that they're involved. I mean, and even at 3 a.m., I mean, there was the drunk kids in the field. There's all sorts of partiers walking around. I mean, you know, it, the likelihood is these were just some college students walking around in this area. But what do they know? Did they see something? I'm pausing because I just want to tell the people exactly what we're looking at here. This title of this video is Idaho 4 Banfield Body Cam Captured Unknown Rear Passenger Through the Passenger Door Mirror. If you would like to visit his channel and support him, he's an up and coming creator. His channel handle is Rolo Mota 420. Well, people, we in all, like we're saying, in Spanish and Mexican, we say we ain't all gold coins to um, to bring smiles and glow everybody to glow in everybody's eyes. You know, I'm not a gold coin, so I am what I am. But I'm a, I'm a straight up G. I'm a straight up motherfucker. That you know that if I see I'm um, mistaken on something, I admit it, you know? And I ain't gonna, I ain't the one that's gonna come up to your face and gonna try to deceive you and try to say something, you know, like something that ain't, but anyways, you know? Bounce back, it's like, you bounce back with better things like um, right here. Hmm. Check this out. So this is a mirror, right? Hold on. Thank God, you know, I'm not rich and I'm not poor, you know. I got hustle. I know how to get by. And I ain't here for views or tips or whatever, you know. I'm here for the fucking truth, you know. Fuck your feelings and everything. I'm going to fuck if you, if you think I'm, you know, your narrative or this or that, you know. Fucking narrative. I'm just here for what I see and what it is, you know. And whatever I see, I call it. I sit straight up. I'm a G. Where is this? Damn. I think I know who it is. Yeah. Shit. It's Kaylee. Yeah, it's her. Fuck. I always knew it. I knew it. It was like the last call was at 2.52 and all of a sudden their body cam turned off, turned on at 2.53 something, almost 2.54. Come on, people. You didn't say this is not her? Look at her. Look at those eyes. Come on, people. That's one of the victim's eyes right there, straight up, you know? I'm going to make sure you get justice. All you poor angels. That's the last thing I do on this earth. Damn. I think 
I don't know if she had a cross or something like uh, in her chain, but I don't know if she's holding something like could be a cross or something in her hand. Yeah, it looks like she's holding some, something that has the shape of a cross in her hand. It's just these little quick seconds. It's probably like a two second part. This is a slow motion, people. This is only like two seconds after footage. Oh, I think they're attacking her in the backseat already, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Shit. Yeah, she was being attacked in the backseat. Make that look. Fuck. Damn. Oh, fuck. Fuckers. What the fuck? I fucking see that. Do you guys see that? There should be an attack. Look. Oh, that's so. Oh, shit. Fuck. Look, people. Look at the shadow right here. Look, they, look they, there's like. Stick some, like, stabber or some, something. Watch. Watch the movement. Look, somebody holding her. Look. Look from the neck. Look at the other hand. Look. It's going to go this way. There's a shadow right here. There's somebody right here. See the hands look. Right here, look. Right there. Ooh. Oh, shit. Oh. Look at the movements towards her. They're just burning out to the person that is doing it, you know? But it's also. It's either the, the passenger of this car or somebody that's in the back. But I really think it's a passenger. Yeah, it has to be the passenger. This is a little clear. You see all that red substance? I believe this white thing is the knife. Well, I... I... The reflection of the knife from the outside.
I thought that was, it, that looks like a person to me. I'm going to pause this. I'm going to stop right there. Okay. Stop. So if I am seeing this correctly, it looks like, so I'm pointing up here. That's the roof of the car. And then right here would be the edge of the window. And I would assume this would be the person here. If I'm analyzing what he's saying you know slap you're not the first person to say something very similar to that so there are other people who sh share your light your uh, opinion And you guys still believe that they didn't have nothing to do with the people? Do you guys still blindly believe that this is not somebody on their back seat? Look, the car's moving. The car's moving the whole time. Look, this is their seat. Look. I'm getting out of the whole I'm getting out of the screen. All right, y'all. I've got my team full hat on because this is literally probably the biggest conspiracy to me but I can see it happening all right we're gonna start here looking at the difference in the Elantra and the Fusion the Elantra being the vehicle owned by one said Brian Koberger the Ford Fusion allegedly being an undercover Moscow police cop car so here we have the back end of the hyundai elantra and i want you to pay attention to the brake lights it has a third row brake light and then two in the back not sure why i said third row <laughs> think about seats inside of a car but anyway it has a third brake light situated at the top of the trunk this is the back of a ford fusion like the one seen in the video, Banfield video, driven by the undercover cops, okay? The style of this vehicle has not changed since 2014, and they stopped producing them in 2020. This is a view of the front of the Elantra and the Ford Fusion side by side. So this is a still shot from the Banfield video of the Ford Fusion that was seen on November 13th at like 3 a.m. for this alcohol stop. This is the Ford Fusion overlaid on top of the Linda Lane footage. Now let's see how well it matches up. So it does have some issues when it lines up. However, you got to understand this picture was taken from the officer's body cam, which is a wall eye view. So we're gonna do the same with a stock image of a fusion. Only thing I can say is this, y'all would not want me up on that jury because I'm trying to tell you right now, you would never without more video, right? Convince me that this was solely a Hyundai Elantra and that any other car manufactured is out of the question especially when you have plain clothes officers in the area and one that looks like this now we have to do the elantra too okay so this is a 2015 hyundai elantra side view like in the video so let's see how it lines up i'm not gonna lie they both work both of them literally line up but I, I'm going to stop my opinion and I'd love to know your opinion in the chat. I think the Elantra lines up better simply for the scoop on the, the scoop on the roof. I think that's what you'd call it. There's also a problem with the lights. We're going to take a minute and overlay this Elantra, right? 
in and out with the transparency just so we can see how it lines up. Dimension wise, they are not the same. The Fusion is like a foot, foot and a half longer than the Elantra, which actually makes it line up perfectly with the Linda Lane footage. They both have a rear rear panel window that literally angles up in the back. I mean, did they just find a car that could have passed as the undercover car? Maybe. All right, I want you to watch this clip right here, and I want you to pay attention to where the arrow comes in. So this video is inverted, which means lights are black and everything else is just white, okay? Now we're back to normal, and this is when this person is backing up to turn around. We'll play it again inverted, but notice you only see two lights for the brake lights. This is the cop walking to the undercover car. Note the shape of the brake lights. And this is a Hyundai Elantra with the, all the brake lights on inverted. Now this is the Ford Fusion slash undercover police car with its brake lights illuminated. There is no third brake light. Kind of like the car we see in the video. You can see this third row, th third light right here glowing, right? So we should be able to see it in the surveillance footage. Have a great week.